Section 4-3, and I want to show that the inverse transform of S over S squared, S to the fourth, S to the fourth plus 4A to the fourth is equal to 1 over 2A squared hyperbolic sine AT sine AT. All right, so that's what I want to show. All right, now this is a problem very similar to what you're going to have on your test. It's going to be it's going to be worded slightly different than this one. It's going to say find the Laplace transform of something and then show it's equal to this, whatever this is. So it's going to be the same thing. So instead of instead of trying to breaking my head trying to figure out whether or not the inverse Laplace transform of this is that, I'm just going to take the Laplace transform of this side and hope it comes out to that. Okay, so that, that's my plan. So I've got 1 over 2a squared. I've got um, hyperbolic sine. So that would be e to the at minus e to the minus at over 2 times the sine of at. Okay, so that, that's what I've got. And so I've got 1 over 2a squared e to the at over 2 sine at minus e to the minus at 1 over 2a squared 1 over 2 over 2 sine at okay so I've got um, e to the, uh, no, I got 1 over 4 a squared e to the a t sine a t minus 1 over 2 4 a squared e to the minus a t sine a t. And I'm going to take the Laplace transform of that. Okay, so where the heck is my Laplace transform table? All right, so I've got e to the at sine. Okay, so e to the at sine at. All right, so I'm going to have 1 over 4 a squared, and I'm going to have k, which is a 1, over s minus 1 squared, plus 1 squared minus 1 over 4 over a squared times I've got a minus sign up there now so I've got a 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared Is it a instead of a 1? What are you talking about? Well, since it's sine at? Yeah, sine at, right. So but, like but, oh, okay, I guess I have to do that. So this is going to be a, 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 a. And this has to be a, and that has to be a. Is that better? Okay, so that's what I've got. All right, so I've got um, 1 over 4 a squared. We'll bring it out this time. And I've got a over s squared minus 2sa. Plus 2a. Okay, and then I've got minus a over s squared plus 2sa plus 2a squared.
Okay, we're happy with that. All right, now we're going to take and uh, do a um, upper and lower thing. Um, I'm going to have a common denominator. Okay, so my common denominator is 1 over 4a squared. It's going to be s squared minus 2sa plus 2a squared times uh, s squared plus 2sa plus 2a squared. And then on the top, I'm going to have a s squared plus 2sa squared plus 2a cubed minus a s a s squared plus 2s a squared plus 2a cubed what did that first thing say and uh, something that yeah. where i don't see anything no it's a times s squared Okay, so this just turns out to be a ninth grade algebra problem. 1 over 4a squared. And then I've got uh, a s squared minus a s squared. It goes away. Uh, it goes, everything goes away? No, everything no. doesn't go away because there's a minus sign sitting right here, right? And there's a minus sign getting, sitting there. So I've got 4s, a, s, 4s, a squared, everything else goes away, divided by what's on the bottom. s squared minus 2sa plus 2a squared, s squared plus 2sa plus 2a squared. All right, well. It looks like I've got a 4 there and I got an a squared there, so I end up with a, a um, s on the top. And I look at my problem and I see, isn't that lovely? I'm supposed to have an s on the top. I guess I'm right. No, I'm not yet. All right, now I've got to multiply these two guys together. So I've got s to the fourth plus 2s cubed a plus 2s squared a squared minus 2s cubed a minus 4 s squared a squared minus 4 s a cubed then I have 2 plus 2 s squared a squared plus 4 s a cubed plus 4 a to the fourth. Shouldn't that first s be to the fourth? Why? Where? This guy here? Yeah. Why? It's not to the fourth yet? Yeah. So now I got s to the fourth. That goes away. This goes away. This goes away. Plus 4 a to the fourth. And I have that um, the inverse Laplace transform of s over s to the fourth plus 4a to the fourth is equal to a hyperbolic sine of at sine at. Okay, good enough? Is that what I'm supposed to do? One over, but this I have to have one over two a squared sitting there. All right. So I didn't I didn't try to I didn't try to kill myself trying to find the inverse Laplace transform of something that I wasn't going to be able to do. I went and found the Laplace transform of something that I had that I that I could do and showed that it was. Um Yeah. Can you go back up to the top and like walk through the steps you did? Just to help me better understand it. Okay, so what's the hyperbolic sign of A T? So I, I went, I knew that if I, I, if I left it as hyperbolic sine and tried to find the Laplace transform, I'd be hopeless, right? 
but I know that I have hyper I know I have inverse Laplace transforms for e to the at sine of something. So I, I, I've, I've seen them in my table before. So, so that's e minus e is. Uh... So, the hyperbolic cosine of at is e to the at minus plus plus e to the minus at divided by 2. That's a, that's a definition. Okay, yeah. The hyperbolic sine of at is e to the at minus e to the minus at over 2. That's, that's my definition. By definition, those two are true. So as soon as I saw the hyperbolic sine of at, I knew to change that to the e to the at minus e to the minus at because that's going to give me a chance to solve the problem that I wouldn't be able to solve if I just sat there and changed thumbs. Okay. So, so that's why I did that. So now once that I have that, now I, now I have things that I can find the um, inverse, uh, that I can find the Laplace transform of. So that's number nine in my table. And I, I just uh, apply number nine in my table twice. And it would have been better if I got it right the first time, but I obviously did it wrong on purpose so you could catch me. And uh, so I did that. And then once I got there, now it's just ninth grade algebra until I get to my answer. And I, and I see that I got the right thing. Okay, good enough? Um, the problem on the on the test is going to take a whole sheet of paper to do the ninth grade algebra part. So we'll start at the top, use the whole piece of paper. All right, next problem. That was a very good choice. You chose one that I could solve and explain, and I didn't and I didn't mess it up much on the way. And I made errors that you could correct as I went through it. Um, what more could you want in a problem? In section 4 1, just look at the problem real quick. That's, that's my question on um, And those ones that you can just look at the sheet and find out on that way. And the floss sheet. Can just like the well, plan. some of them say use the, the integral form to get, right? So, and there will be a problem like that on the test where you have to use the integral form to get it. So, um, is that where you just so, take it to the. In, yeah, so f of t infinity. is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi, 3 pi to 4 pi, um, 4 pi to infinity. So you'd have um, the Laplace transform of f of t um, integral 0 to pi 1 e to the um, st dt plus integral pi to 2 pi of 2 e to the st dt plus integral 3 pi to 4 pi 3 e to the st dt plus limit b goes to infinity integral 4 pi to b of 4 e to the st dt and then you end up solving solving for each of those one at a time until you get the that's from the answer. definition of the Laplace yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's from the definition of the Laplace transform right but that all that I think uh, that's probably the last test, last problem on the test. So and you you'll muff it up. When you do that, do you always go from zero to infinity? Yes. Or how come on yours from zero to pi and stuff like that? Because I I had to break out the function yeah. was was different on different intervals, so I had to go zero to infinity, but it was one, two, three, and four and, and different oh, intervals. Okay, so you break it down. So I had to break it up, and it was piecewise continuous. And if I would have written this properly to say zero is less than t is less than pi, and pi is less than or equal to t, less than pi, I could have done that too. But 
That would have taken way too long to write that. Any particular section? Four one. Four one. And I, I reserve the right to tell you I'm not doing it because that type of problem isn't going to be on the test or because it's just friggin' too hard to do. Um, this one's so pathetically easy, I'll do it anyway. Sine two t, cosine two t, and I want to find the Laplace transform. Use the Laplace transforms in your Laplace transform table to do that. All right, so f of s is equal to, um, is it square root of 2? Or is it 2? It's 2. 2 over s squared plus 4 plus s over s squared plus 4. And then if I had my Laplace transform table, yeah, so th this is number, I did, I used number 8 to get him, and I used number 10 to get him, and that's all there is right now. Um, a few, uh, Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. We're in section four point one. We have a three over s minus four. And it says um, find the inverse Laplace transform of the following. All right. So I look at my book. I look at my Laplace transform table. And I see that this is um, number 7. So um, f of t is um, 3e to the 4t. I'm done already. I promise it won't be that easy. All your problems will, in fact, go up the page. Okay, so I got x double prime, 8x prime, 15x, x at 0 is 2, x prime at 0 is minus 3. I'm going to take the Laplace transform, and this is equal to 0. I'll take the Laplace transform of everything. All right, so I've got s squared, x of s, minus s, x0 minus x prime of 0 plus 8 times s x of s minus x 0 plus 15 x of s is equal to 0. Right, and now I'm going to apply the initial conditions, and I have uh, s squared x of s minus x0 is 2, 2s two plus 3 plus 8s x of s minus 2 plus 15 x of s is equal to zero. I separate my, I um, bring my terms together and I have s squared plus 8s plus 15 x of s 
is equal to um, 2s minus 1. So I put the 2s over there, and I put the plus 1 over there, and I get 2s minus 1. x of s, 2s minus 1 divided by s squared plus 8s plus 15. Now I can do one of two things. I can factor that or I can complete the square on it, whichever is appropriate for the situation. And I look at it and I say, well, gee, I, that, that factors. If it factors, I don't have to complete the square. 2s plus minus 1, that's going to be uh, s plus 5, s plus 3. And then I do a, a partial fraction on it. Um, a over s plus 5. Uh, minus 1, uh, no, b. b over s plus 3. And um, I'd say, well, when I go and I find the, the common denominator again, I'm going to have a s plus 3a plus b s plus 5b has to equal 2s minus 1. So I look at the s term, and I see that s a plus b is 2. And I look at the unit term, and I see that 3a plus 5b is equal to minus 1. And then I solve for a and b. I'll use Kramer's rule, and I'll say a is um, 2 minus 1, 1, 5. 1, 3, 1, 5. 10 minus and minus 1 is 11 over 5 minus 3 is 2. So A is going to be um, 11 over 2. So if A is 11 over 2, then B has to be um, 7 over 2 minus 7 over 2. And 35 minus, I got minus 35 plus 33 is minus 2 over 2, which is 1, so that checks. And so now I got uh, A, which is 11 over 2 divided by S plus 5, and then I got minus 7 over 2 divided by S plus 3, and that's going to be my X of S. Now I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform of everything. I'm going to go to my Laplace transform tables, and I see that that's number 7. And this guy's number 7. And I'm going to say uh, x of t equals 11 over 2 e to the minus 5t minus 7 over 2 e to the minus 3t. Uh, can you go for a moment? Not until I check my work and know I have the right answer. Um, all right, move up a little bit. How far? Uh, up a little more. Uh, a little more. A little bit more. A little bit more. just a little more. Hmm? A little more. That's why I wrote the problem down. All right, right there. Where did you get the minus 2s plus 3? Okay, looking at the Laplace transform table and see number 3 in your Laplace transform table. It says the second derivative is s squared, the Laplace transform of f of t minus s, f at 0, minus f prime at 0. Okay, you got that? Page three, number three on your Laplace transform table. Okay, well, what's x of zero? x at zero is two. Oh, okay. What's x prime at zero? x prime at zero is minus three. Oh, so that because so minus two s okay. plus three. Right, exactly. Okay, gotcha. mm -hmm. And normally I skip that step altogether. I, I don't. Yeah, no, normally I don't write this down. Normally I put the initial conditions in. Right, right at that point. But at that point, I wanted to confuse you and show as many steps as possible 
so that you'd have no chance at all of knowing Jack or Bean. Okay. Um, Is that fair? Not really, but let's try Well, wait a minute. We have to check our work. A differential equation is only good after you check it. So I'm going to find x at 0 is going to be 11 over 2 minus 7 over 2, which is um, 6 over 2, which is, no it's not, yes it is, no it's not. What is it? 4 over 2, which is 2, which is correct? Oh, okay. And the other one's going to be negative 3, the x is So we'll, we'll assume that the other part's right, too. Okay, uh, let's do the number here. Um, it's 14 neurons. Um, let's try number 21. I like that. We're going to just try it. All right. So uh, I'm 21 and I'm still in section 4 2. F of s, 1 over s squared, s squared plus 1. Okay, so I look at my Laplace transform tables to see if it's there. And it's already in my Laplace transform table. It is number 23. So I just write down f of t is equal to t minus sine t. Well, that was pretty pathetic. Okay, can you do one that's not on the plus transform sheet then? That you have to work well, on? you'd have to pick it. All right, well, let's say it wasn't on the Laplace transform. I'm, I'm too dumb to look on the, my Laplace transform okay, sheet. So I'm too dumb to look at my Laplace transform sheet. So I'm going to go and change this to uh, A over S times uh, plus B over S squared plus C S plus D over S squared plus 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a partial fraction on it because I'm anally retentive and that's what I'm going to do because I'm not going to, I refuse to look at the Laplace transform table which might have the answer. Alright, so that means I'm going to have, uh, when, I, when I find the common denominator again, I'm going to have uh, A S cubed plus um, a S plus B S squared plus B plus C S cubed plus D S squared. Am I not? And that's going to have to equal to what's on the top, which is 1. Okay, so I look at the uh, the s cubed guy and I see that a plus c has to be 0. I look at the s guy, s squared guy, and I see that b plus d has to be 0. I look at the s guy and I see that uh, a has to be 0. I look at the unit guy and I see that B has to be 1. Okay, so if B is 1, then D has to be minus 1. If A is 0, then C has to be 0. Okay, so I end up having my Laplace transform look like um, 1 over s squared minus 1 over s squared plus 1 and now can I use my Laplace transform table now? Well, I, I, I see that this is number 5 and this guy is number um, 8 and I can take an inverse Laplace transform of the whole thing and I can get that um, x of t I guess we're really f, but that's okay. t minus sine t. But it certainly was easier just to find it on the Laplace transform table and get it.
I think we should do something like uh, number 15 or 14 or 16. Saying that you're going to have a problem like 15 or 14 or 16 on the final, on the well, not on the final, but on the chapter four test, there's going to be a pro multiple equations, multiple unknown problem. So what do you want? 14, 15, or 16? No, oh, yeah, we'll do 14. All right, so 14 on uh, 4 dash 2. Okay, so I got x double prime, 2x, 4y is 0. And y double prime, x plus 2y is equal to 0. And I have x of 0 is y of 0 is 0. And x prime at 0 is equal to y prime at 0, which is going to be minus 1. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the Laplace transform of the whole thing. Okay, so I've got s squared x of s um, plus 1 plus 2 x of s plus 4 y of s is equal to 0. And then I've got s squared y of s plus 1 plus x of s plus 2 y of s is equal to 0. Okay, then I'm going to go and line them up with my y's and my x's as my variables. So I'm going to say I've got s squared plus 2 x of s plus 4 y of s is equal to minus 1. And I've got uh, x of s plus s squared plus 2 y of s is equal to minus 1. And then I'm going to use Kramer's rule. And Kramer's rule says that x of s is minus 1 minus 1 for s squared plus 2 divided by s squared plus 2, 1, 4, s squared plus 2. On the bottom I have s, plus, s squared plus 2 squared minus 4, which becomes s squared plus 4s. When I uh, multiply it out on the top, I have minus s squared minus 2 plus 4. So I got minus s squared plus 2 on top. Okay, good enough. And then I'm going to do the same thing for y of s. So y of s is going to be on the bottom. We're going to have s squared plus 4s on the bottom. And then on the top, I'm going to have um, s squared plus 2, 1, uh, minus 1, minus 1. s squared plus 4s on the bottom. And minus, minus and minus makes it a plus. Minus s squared minus 1. Okay. So now I, I have uh, x of s is um, minus s squared. Um, this is an s to the fourth s squared, right? S to the fourth s squared. Um, yeah, that's better. So I've got s squared minus s squared plus 2 divided by s squared times s squared plus 4. And then, um, then I do a partial, um, yeah, I guess I'd have to do a partial fraction on it. So then I do a partial fraction on it, a over s plus b 
over s squared plus c s plus d over s squared plus 4. And then I find my common denominator and I have a s cubed plus 4 a s plus b s squared plus 4 b plus c s cubed plus d s squared is supposed to equal minus 2 s plus 2. Okay, so I'm looking at s cubed term. A plus C is 0. Look at the S squared term. B plus D is minus 1. Looking at the S term, 4A is equal to 0. Looking at the unit term, 4B is equal to 2. So 4A is equal to 0 implies a is equal to 0 implies c is equal to 0. If 4b is 2, then b is equal to 1 half. If b is equal to 1 half, then d is equal to minus 3 halves. Okay, so I have x of s equals 1 half over s squared. minus 3 over 2 over s squared plus 2 s squared plus 4 okay and then I say well s squared plus 4 that's the sine guy I needed 2 up here so I'm going to rewrite it um, 1 half 1 over s squared minus 3 over 4 2 over s squared plus 4. And then I'd uh, do an inverse Laplace transform. And I'd find that this is equal to 1 half t minus 3 quarters sine 2t. And that would be my x of x, x of t. Right, now I got to go back and solve for y. So y of s is equal to minus s squared minus 1, minus s squared minus 1 divided by s squared, s squared plus 4. So I do another partial fraction and say I got a over s plus b over s squared plus c s plus d over s squared plus 4. I put it under common denominator and I find I have a s cubed plus 4 a s plus b s squared plus 4b plus cs cubed plus ds squared is supposed to equal minus s squared minus 1. Okay, I look at the s cubed term and I find that a plus c is 0. Look at the s squared term and I find that b plus d is minus 1. I look at the s term and I find that 4a is equal to 0 implying a is equal to 0 implying c is equal to 0. I look at the unit term and I find 4b is equal to minus 1 implying that b is equal to minus 1 quarter if b is minus 1 quarter, then d has to be minus 3 quarters. Okay, so I've got y of s equals minus 1 quarter over s squared minus 3 quarters over s squared plus 4. Okay, I'm going to rewrite that 
y of s is equal to minus 1 quarter 1 over s squared minus 3 eighths uh, times 2 over s squared plus 4. I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform of everything and get uh, y of t is minus 1 quarter t minus 3 eighths sine 2 t. And at that point, we either look in the back of the book and say, yeah, that's right, or we, um, we uh, put it back in our equations and check to see that's right. So is that guy right? OK. So that's how you want to see more of the problem at the same time? No, I, I actually worked that problem for it. Did you get the same answer? Yeah. Oh, OK. But that, that's that's what it's going to take. On the test, you're going to have a problem similar to that. It's going to fill up two pieces of paper. Don't be afraid of it. Just do it. Yeah. Not a problem. And try not to make a mistake. And don't forget to check your work. Okay? Did we do anything past 28 on 4-2? 4 2 no, we only went up to 23. All right, good. Good. All right. Um, For good reason. Yes, let me try to solve for three variables. We're not going to do one of those, though. Has Campbell with the three variables or the two? I don't remember. Do you want me to do the three variable one? No, not really. We tried it. We tried doing it in class. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I can do it now. I'm wide awake. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a matter of being able to see so s small of the screen at the same time is the real issue. If I was going to do it, I'd probably do it on the whiteboard. Because uh, that, that's the only way you can see enough of the problem. Uh, okay, number four. Hmm? F of t e to the minus t over two cosine two t minus pi over eight. Uh, apply the, the uh, uh, translation theorem to find the Laplace transforms of these problems. Okay, so we have to go back to the translation theorem. And the translation theorem says the Laplace transform is e to the at f of t is equal to f of s minus a. Okay, so that, and, and um, I should have done it in a different color. So this f of t is that guy there. Okay. okay. So what we need is uh, the Laplace transform of cosine two t minus pi over eight. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Okay, so I go to my Laplace transform table. And it says, um, no problem, number 10. So this is a Laplace transform, cosine 2t minus pi over 4. All right, so at this point, Unless, oh, let's, uh, I'll open up um, Maple. 
because we're going to have to come up with this trig identity for minus two things in there. Okay, so I have the, the cosine of um, A minus B. And I want to expand. All right, so that's cosine A, cosine, cosine, plus sine, sine. All right, so I'm looking at the Laplace transform of cosine 2t, cosine pi over 4, plus sine 2t, sine pi over 4. Is it cosine sine? No, cosine, cosine, It's cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Yes. Okay, well, um, the cosine and the sine of pi over 2 are both the same. They're both the square root of 2 over 2. So this is going to be the Laplace transform of the square root of 2 over 2 cosine 2t two plus the square root of 2 over 2 sine 2t. Two okay, so that's going to be uh, square root of 2 over 2 um, s over s squared plus 4 plus the square root of 2 over 2 uh, 2 over s squared plus 4. Okay, so now I've got the Laplace transform of the f of t. So the Laplace transform of the whole thing is just um, that f of s becomes uh, s minus a. Okay, and minus is already there, so that's going to be s plus t over 2. So I'm going to have... Um, square root 2 over 2 s plus t over 2 um, it's not t over 2 though it's um, 1 half a is 1 half um, plus 1 half divided by s plus 1 half squared plus 4 plus the square root of 2 over 2, 2 over s plus 1 half squared plus 4. Well, um, it looks like that's just square root 2, because I have two of them, right? And so I'd be square root of 2, s plus 5 halves, divided by s plus 1 half squared plus 4. So that, that looks like my right answer. I'll just stick with that. OK. Um, <clears throat> so where did the s plus half come into place? On the, the s minus a part? Right here. Oh, because s a minus a. a. Right. So. A is minus a half. A minus a half is just a plus half. The T is the T that's sitting right here. Yeah. So I'm putting an S plus a half every place that I had an S in this guy. Every place I have an S in this guy, I'm putting S plus a half. Yep. That's what that means to do. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, let's do nine. Yeah, nine. Nine's better. Yep. Nine. Nine. Number nine. Three s plus five 
over s squared minus 6s plus 25. So the first thing I'd ask is, can I factor this? The answer is no. So if I can't factor it, I'm going to complete the square on it. Okay, so 3s plus 5 divided by s squared minus 6s. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9 squared. Oh, plus 9. Uh, plus 16. And then I'm going to say uh, 3s plus 5 over s minus 3 squared plus 16. So I've completed the square in it. Now I'm going to go to my Laplace transform table where my complete the square guys are. And, Why did you, how did you get, because you get oh. and then you put it on the other side so it would be a 9 and subtract it back. So you have 16? Yes. I borrowed the 9 from the 25, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completing the square. Okay, so um, that's uh, S plus something. So that looks like, um, that looks like 11. So that looks sort of like number 11 in my Laplace transform table. And so, in order to be number 11, I would have to have s minus 3 on top. Okay, so I'm going I'm to say this is 3 times s minus 3 divided by s minus 3 squared plus 16. And then I'd have to have something left over. So it looks like I've got a minus 9 left over, uh, but I also have a 5. So what's 5 and 9? Five and 9, 13. So it looks like this is going to be 13 over s minus 3 squared plus 16. Mm, okay, 14. Right. Except I have to have plus 5, not minus 5. So this has to be a 19. No, it doesn't. 14 is right. All right, 14 is right. Because I, I've got, yeah, I got a, well, I want to, I want, this guy here, when I bring these two guys back together, has to be that. So I've got 3s minus 9 there, plus 14, making that 5. So I'm, I'm looking at number 11 and number 9, and I'm making this guy look like number 11 first. Okay, now I'm going to make this guy look like number 9 second. So I've got 3, s minus 3, s minus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus... Okay, now number 9 needs to have a 4 on top. So I'm going to put a 4 on top. S minus 3 squared plus 4 squared on the bottom. Now that means I'm going to have a 14 divided by 4, which is a 7 over 2 times that guy. And now I'm ready to do my inverse Laplace transform. And I'm using number 11, number 9, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I got 3 e to the 3t cosine 2t plus 7 over 2 e to the 3t sine 2t. Shouldn't that be a 4t? There's a 4 square there. There's 16 right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, those 4s. 4, 4. I knew I should have left it a 16. Okay, good enough? Um, good, okay, so but step... How 
right there. You got from the blue part to the black part. Okay. How did you get that? I, I completed the square. Okay. I look at my Laplace transform table. And I see that with that completed square on the bottom, uh, number 11 is the closest thing that I have. But to have number 11, I'm going to have to have an S minus A on top. So I put an S minus A on top, and I bring the 3 on the outside. And then I ask myself, what do I have left over? Well, what I have left over is a 14. So I put a 14 under the common denominator, and as luck would have it, that turns out to be number 9. I have some more manipulation to do to make it number 9, but that's okay. So when I add 3s minus 9 to 14, I get 3s plus 5. So I add, when I add this guy plus that guy, I end up with that guy. Okay. okay. But without my so Laplace transform table. Yeah. You just separate yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I could have gone the other way and said, well I need I need to have a four on top here. So I could put a I could have brought the four out and put the four on top first. And said, "Well, I have a 3s plus one left over. How am I gonna, uh, how am I gonna get this? I could have done that too, but that would have been more painful to figure out. But I did it was least painful. Um, how would you do that using the theorem? Theorem one." I think I just did, didn't I? Um, Which problem was it? Uh, Seven, nine. nine. It was nine. We Apply the translation theorem. Yeah, that's what I did. I applied the translation theorem. As soon as I complete the square, that's what I've done. Because the, the completion of the square gives you that theorem. Okay. That's what you have. Yeah. Uh, you can do problems for this. Go ahead. Uh, can you do ones from the section 4.4, the 29 to 34? I doubt it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so 4.4. .4, Starting where? Uh, 29. 29. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to do 31. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. 31. 31. 4 dash 4. And I've got T X double prime minus 4 T plus 1 X prime. plus 2, 2t plus 1, x is equal to 0. Did I write the problem down right? All right, so I'm going to rewrite the problem. t, x double prime, minus 4t, x prime, minus x prime, plus 4t, x, that should be a plus x equal to 0 at the end. Plus yep. 2x is equal to 0. So what am I looking at? 2t plus 1? What, what are you complaining about? Oh, wait, never mind. Okay. Not complaining about anything? Okay, now because we are in this section of the book, we are reminded. Um that the um, Laplace transform of minus t over f of t is equal to f prime of s. Okay. 
So we were reminded of that thing. And we're going to go and we're going to do a Laplace transform of the whole thing. Okay. So the first guy, the Laplace form of T, the Laplace transform of T x double prime is going to be minus uh, s x of s, s squared, s of x. Now, do, are we given any initial conditions? x at 0 is 0. So x at 0 is 0 minus x prime at 0, which we don't know what it is, the derivative of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm, I'm taking the Laplace transform of this thing. I'm putting the, the negative sign on the other side. There's the negative sign. There's the, the Laplace transform of f of t sitting right there, and I'm going to take the derivative of it later. Okay, I have a minus sign there, so this is going to be 4 plus 4 s x of s, and I'm going to take the derivative of it. And then I'm going to have minus x of s, and then this guy here is going to be minus 4 s of x, and I'm going to take the derivative of it, plus 2 x of s is going to be 0. Should the one that's right above 2 x of s be s? This guy? Yeah, this, this has to have an S in front of it. That's what you're complaining about? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You're right. That has to have an S in front of it. And this has to have an S in front of it, too. That one? Yes. Um, no. Not that one. This one. That one. That one does... That one does. No, that one doesn't. All right. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, what is x prime at zero? It's a constant, right? All right. So when I take the derivative of the constant, it's going to go away. So this is going to be minus 2s x of s plus s squared x prime of s. This guy... Do I take a derivative of that guy? How come some of them have derivatives and some don't? When, when there's a t in front, I'm taking the derivative. When there's not a t in front, I'm not taking the derivative. Why is that? Well, when I... Because the theorem... If all I have is x, and I take the Laplace transform of x, then I'm going to get s of x. But if I take the Laplace transform of minus t x of uh, x of t, uh, of t, then I'm going to get the derivative of that. So whatever the derivative of, of the Laplace transform of, of x of x is, I have to take the derivative of. Oh, so that's like a formula. Yes, right here. That's the theorem. Theorem number two. That's okay. what I'm applying. Okay. Now this next one is plus four. I take the derivative of it and I get x of s plus s x prime of s. Okay, and then I've got uh, minus x of s minus 4 minus s x of s minus 4 x prime of s plus 2 x of s is equal to zero. All right, now we've got to get like terms together. So I've got s squared plus 4s minus 4 x prime of s. And then I've got, um, there's a minus sign there, minus sign there plus sign there, minus sign there. Then I've got um, plus minus 
minus 2s plus 4 minus s plus 2 x of s is equal to 0. Okay, so I got minus s squared plus 4s minus oh shit smarter than my bridges are minus 4s plus 4 x prime of s is equal to minus plus plus 3s minus 6 x of s Okay, so we have x prime of s divided by x of s is equal to 3s minus 6 divided by, put the minus sign out there, s minus 2 squared. x prime over x of s is equal to minus... 3 s minus 2 divided by s minus 2 squared x prime x of s equals minus 3 over s minus 2 now I'm going to take the integral of both sides the integral of x prime of s over x of x is natural log x of s this is going to be uh, minus 3 natural log s minus 2 plus c. Right? Right. Okay. Natural log x of s natural log s minus 2 to the minus 3 plus c. Raise everything to powers of e. x of s is equal to 1 over s minus 2 cubed times c. Alright, well, um, do we have a Laplace transform for 1 over s minus 2 cubed? And the answer is um, number 16. Exactly. So I'm going to take a inverse plus transform. And I'm going to get x of t equals. And we're using number 16. I've got a c. I've got a um, n is 3. So I got a t squared e to the 2t divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial. So x of t is equal to c t squared e to the 2t because the, the constant integration brings in the constant. 2. Should it be a negative 2t? On the e. Um, no, because I have a minus 2 there already, and the, the Laplace transform table has it with a minus sign and a uh, minus a, s minus a, with the e to the a. Yeah. And was I not lucky on that one? Down. down. Yeah. That, I, I was already down. Not all the way. Yeah, you have to go to the bottom. There you go. Okay. And I think we've already, I think we did that problem already. Is that the right answer? Yeah. Oh. But you do have to keep your wits about yourself working that problem. You have to be 
concentrated on being in section 4.4, what theorems are in 4.4, and how the heck do I get the Laplace transform of, of T of X double prime? And if you do it wrong, well, so so, waste of time. Okay, another one. Do I want to do 30? Okay, I'll do 30. You think it's, are you trying to see whether I can get two in the row right? Is that <laughs> number 30? T x double prime. 3t minus 1 x prime. 3x equals 0. X at zero is zero. And turning back to page. Uh, you said there's no convolution the text, right? No, won't be any okay. convolution. And um, looking at theorem number two, we find the Laplace transform of minus t f of t is equal to the derivative of the Laplace transform f of t. Okay, so that being the case, I'm going to take the Laplace transform of everything that I see. Okay, so I'm going to have minus s squared x of s minus x at 0, and I'm going to take the derivative of it. That's that guy. Plus 3 times s x of s and I'm going to take the derivative of it. Then I'm going to have minus s s of s minus x of 0. This is 0. This is the prime guy. x prime at 0. Which is 0. And then I'm going to have plus 3 x of s is equal to zero. So I'm going to take the derivative of this guy minus 2s x of s minus s squared x prime of s times a constant which is zero plus 3 x of s plus 3s x prime of s minus s x of s plus 3 x of s is going to be 0. Okay, so I got a minus s squared. I got a plus 3s x prime of s plus I got a minus 2s plus 3 minus s plus another 3 x of s is equal to 0. Okay, so why is it that I only have two terms there? And um, okay, the reason I know because I only have two terms. That's why I only have two terms. Okay. All right, so I've got minus s squared 3s x prime of s is equal to 3s minus 6 x of s. So x prime of s over x of s is equal to 3 s minus 3 divided by minus s s minus 3. Oh, that's minus 2 on the right. Where? Um, uh, oh, this is a 2. And I got a 3 on the bottom. What did I do wrong? This is minus 3 becomes a plus 3. 
that's a minus, that's a plus nine, it becomes plus six, becomes minus six. And I've got an s squared plus three s. All right, that's what I got. I'm going to integrate both sides. Natural log sx. And what is the integral of the other side? It would appear so, wouldn't it? Yes. Even though you don't particularly care to do <laughs> partial fractions on it. But it looks like that's what we have to do is partial fractions on it. That, that's what I was. You got them done already, or what? Now, if you have a graphing calculator, a 85, 86, 89, it does partial fractions. So this is not, unless you know that integral. That's sort of the only. Okay, so I got a s plus b over s minus three. So I'm going to have a s minus three a plus b s over s, s minus 3. Um, I'm going to have a minus sign on top. OK. I'm going to put the minus sign on top. And I'm going to have a, a minus 3s plus 6 on top. Okay, well that's that's okay. I can do that. All right. So without doing anything at all, I can see that a has to be um, minus two. And if a is minus two, then b has to be minus one. B is going to be minus one. Okay, good enough. So I've got minus 2 over s minus 1 over s minus 3, and I'm taking the integral of it. Okay, so I've got what I had before. I had natural log. So I had natural log s of x is equal to minus 2 natural log x minus the natural log of s minus 3. Should I be able to Yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll raise everything to the e power. And so I have x of s equals one over s squared plus one over s minus three minus one over s minus three minus um or yeah um okay so if i put this here it's going to be s to the minus two <laughs> All right, so that'd be that. This would be it. Okay, so everything's fine. Yeah, that, that's right. All right, so um, x of t. Now is we going to come? This guy's going to be. How come there was one over x minus three? Is that because the negative right there? Where? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can bring a negative one. Yeah, the negative. This okay. negative comes okay. in, and there's a minus one. And so this is one over that, and either yeah, exactly. Um, um, no, no, no. Uh, okay. All right. Now back to here. This is 
minus 2 natural log s. And this is minus natural log s minus 3. Okay, so I don't I don't want to do that yet. Okay, so I've got natural log x of s is equal to natural log s to the minus 2 divided by s minus 3. Natural log x of s um, there's a plus C out here too, right? Plus C is out there. All right, I got that. All right, so I got natural log 1 over S squared S minus 3 plus C. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise this to powers of E. And I get X of S equals C 1 over S squared S minus 3. Now, let me check real quick to see if I have that as a Laplace transform. S squared. Um, we couldn't be that lucky. So now we're stuck with another partial fraction. So I've got uh, a over s plus b over s squared plus c over s minus 3. And I've got a s squared minus 3 a s plus b s minus 3 b plus c s squared has to equal 1. Okay, so I look at the uh, S squared guy, and I see that A plus C is 0. I look at the S guy, and I see that uh, minus 3A plus B is 0. I look at the unit guy, and I see that minus 3B is 1, implying that B is minus one-third. Okay, if B is minus one-third, then that means A has to be, um, A has to be minus one-sixth. Minus one-sixth, and if A is minus one-sixth, then C has to be plus one-sixth. Okay, so I've got uh, x of s is equal to c times minus one six over s minus one third over s squared plus one six one over s minus three. All right, now I'm ready to take the inverse Laplace transform of everything that I see. And I see x of t is equal to minus 1 6 minus 1 third t plus 1 6 e to the 3 t. Isn't that 1 6 supposed to be over the s minus 3? It is. It is. Yep. Sounds like a fifth grade math problem there. Now, you want me to write it different? I'll write it different. No, it's perfectly okay that way. All right, excellent. Um, somebody check in the back of the book, see if I'm even close. Is this number three? Yep. I mean, if it's not three, it's not uh, Time C. So we still have a, a C sitting there. Well, the C, all right, if I have a C, then I'd, I'd say X of T 
because this is times some constant c. So the, the constant c would suck everything up and it'd be minus c minus 2ct plus c e to the 3t, something like that. Is that what's in the back of the book? Uh, hmm? Yeah, this is 30. So I got to look to see whether or not I think it's zero gross. This is 4, 4, 4. Yeah, that's pretty hosed, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty hosed. That's not even close. Not even close. Not even close. Okay, good enough? I'll, I'll circle it in red. Is there going to be one like that on the test? No. You're kidding me. Thank <laughs> you.